when I retested my hormones, I was like, holy cow. Like I, it was not what I expected. Cause I was like, okay, maybe I'll see a little bit of change. Cause this is going to be gradual, but I, I was shocked. I mean, like that was like happy day for me because what shocks you. <laughs> I'm Maggie UMD. I'm a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of Transform Protocol for turning around autoimmunity and my hormone masterclass for having uh, for achieving hormone balance. If you would like to learn more about balancing your hormones or turning around your autoimmunity, join our Facebook group, Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally. Give us a follow on Instagram or on a Facebook. Give us a thumbs up or just click subscribe. Today we have a follow up interview. A where are they now with one of our alumni? Pamela um, is someone who's a teacher who was very active as an athlete who was really struggling with a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, which was causing crippling pain. It put an end to her uh to her dreams of continuing physical fitness as an athlete. Uh, and it impacted even on her day as a teacher, being able to plan for her day with her students and being able to live her life to her fullest. Fatigue became crushing as a problem for her. We all know, if you haven't seen the interview already, there's a link to her interview uh, about two months after the program where she shared her experience that her pain went away. Yeah, her pain went away. And also her fatigue uh, was really improving. But one of the things that I really wanted pe people to hear about and to understand is that I always tell people that in our program, if I do my job right, I'm going to teach you how to think like me so that you know how to troubleshoot this through the rest of your life. And that this program is a launch pad to the next year and the rest of your life and turning around autoimmunity. So of course, the question is going to be there is, are our alumni learning these skills to self-navigate? And number two, are their results sustainable? And number three, which is a big number three question, which is I am big on hormones. And I am big on the fact that if you can learn to balance your hormones, that's a huge part in long-term autoimmune recovery. And I always, hormone results always take more than a couple months to get. So I'm really interested today to see where nine months later after the program, where's Pamela now with her hormone balance and what are her results now? Just you wait. I'd love for you to just refresh our, their memory and give us a little background as where were you before you even started our program about a year ago? I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis a few years ago. My biggest problem that I had at the time was pain. It was daily. It was every day. There was things I couldn't do. I had a lot of fatigue and I did not know that it was connected to that. I just assumed I have a busy schedule. I'm a teacher. I'm doing stuff after work all the time. And I just thought I was busy. So I was tired and not realizing how bad it was until I started to feel better. The pain level you had before you started program zero to 10, what level would you say it was? When it was bad, it was a 10. Um, when it was good, it was probably a six or seven. Mm -hmm. it, it just depended on the day and what I could manage and whether or not I was taking any anti-inflammatories or whatever, I decided to try to fix it. <laughs> and were you taking medications for the RA or any of your symptoms before you started the program? Not when I started. I had started taking one medication that a rheumatologist recommended and it mm -hmm. didn't work at all. So I just stopped taking it. So which medication was that that hadn't I'm worked? I took methotrexate to start with. Prior to this program, you would say, prior to you beginning coming down the RA, would you say that you were a really active, healthy individual? Oh, absolutely. I was working out at the gym six days a week. I was active in several events and things that were going on in my life. And movement was never an issue for me. I was always active. I've always been an athlete. I remember at the end of the program, which was about eight months ago, how, what had changed? What had improved at the end of the program about eight months ago? Everything. Once I realized what was causing my pain and I knew there was a cause, I just didn't know how to find it. Um, once I knew it was almost immediate within a matter of days, I was almost pain-free. It took a few weeks once I started addressing the fatigue to actually get some energy back. I was able to start doing more things actively. I kind of just felt like I was starting to get my life back. So, so re refresh us on that interview. When you say once you figured out the cause within a couple of days, your pain was gone. What was that cause? For me, it was food. That was the big thing. Yeah. Um, I had a huge intolerance to dairy, which I suspected, uh -huh. but had no way of knowing. Um, right. It was something I tried to address with my rheumatologist and they were like, no, 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 that's, that's got nothing to do with it. And I'm just like, I know it's food related. I just, I knew when I would eat, I would swell and, 
you know, and then I would try to pinpoint it. I'm like, how do I pinpoint it when I've eaten five things? So I just had no way of knowing, but I, I just, I knew just because of when my symptoms would get worse, that there was something related to the Yeah, thing that you knew there was cause and effect, but was it, was it A, B, C, or D, right? And right. so you felt like food mapping clearly pinpointed that it was dairy Absolutely. for you within days of exactly. removing. It was like instant change. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. And then there were layers of it where there were some immediate things that helped the fatigue during the program improve. What were one or two things that you think helped you improve the fatigue during the program for you? I was always drinking a lot of water to begin with, but not really understanding where that connection was. It was a lot easier to understand and tweak things where I needed to. I had some adrenal fatigue, which taking some of that to fix that definitely affected my overall fatigue even like my cortisol, I was, I was stressed. I was stressed all the time and I didn't even realize it because it yeah. just was so gradual. Now I'm just like, eh, okay. <laughs> like not much really well, affects me the way it used to. So literally like our, at our interview, like eight months ago, your pain level was down to very little fatigue. Um, you were, it was declining and you were able to do more and more resume some of your exercising activities. Right. And then um, you felt like you were making some dietary changes that were making big impacts, like with the water, specific with foods that were causing a problem. And then now you're talking about some of the hormone hormonal changes. You started implementing some things with your hormones. So yeah. I, you know, in the program, I tell people that it's two month online program and there's some changes that you'll see immediately. And there are some changes that will marinate and mature over time. And one of them is going to be hormone and hormone results. So today I really want to answer the question for people is, well, are these results that you experienced, were they sustainable and did they get even better or worse? And then number two, what happened with your hormones as you went through the following year? So first question is going to be, were the um, results after the program sustainable? Where are you now with those results, with your pain, with your fatigue? They're absolutely sustainable. I took a couple of supplements I, I'm still taking to help with the hormones. Well, I was doing it for, you know, six to eight months. I was feeling better. I could tell certain times of the month there was improvements. And I kind of was like, well, I, I feel better, but I don't really know without retesting my hormones, what's really happening. And yeah. then when I retested my hormones, I was like, holy cow. Like I, it was not what I expected. Cause I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll see a little bit of change. Cause this is going to be gradual, but because it had been six to eight months when I had retested, I was like, I, I was shocked. I mean, like that was like happy day for me because- What shocked you? It was, well, first of all, but you know, what's cool though, is that number one, you could retest your hormones. Number two is you even know what the hell it means. And number three, you even can compare before and after and realize the, the, the date, the difference between the data. This is like skill sets that doctors don't even have right. on any of those one, two or three. Right. So what did you notice that was different? What was the holy cow in your new hormone results? Well, the big thing for me was the cortisol because my cortisol was really high at night, really high in the morning. I wasn't sleeping because I'm, my brain wouldn't shut off. I was constantly stressed about any given thing. Um, I was estrogen dominant. So I had more estrogen than I should have. I didn't have enough progesterone. My testosterone was low. Um, you know, so I made some changes and I'm like, and like all of it, like corrected itself. And I, I just, like I said, I, I was shocked when I got it. I was like, okay, what's going to happen? Am I going to be upset? And <laughs> I, was, I was shocked. I was shocked. I didn't know what was going to happen when I retested. So, you know, what's funny here is that your everything in your symptoms was improving including all your low testosterone symptoms. We know what we're talking about, ladies. Um, so including your low testosterone symptoms, all those symptoms were improving. And yet you were like scared that your results weren't going to reflect that. Is that what it, this is? Like you didn't really yeah, trust I, your own body? Right. I was like, is this really going to show up? Like, I feel good, like, because for so long, even before the program, it's like, do I feel okay? Do I not? And I feel like things gradually got worse. And it's like, is it really bad? Is it not? Like you're kind of trying to judge on something that has no measure by how you feel until you get those concrete results. And, you know, I'm just, I, like I said, I was excited. I was like, it was like, I, I was shocked and I was happy. So so question, what does it feel like to have cortisol no longer shooting through the roof at night? I sleep amazingly. <laughs> sleep is not a problem for me. I love going to bed when it's time and nice. 
you know, I'm not tired during the day. Like I don't have that, you know, two o'clock, three o'clock crash that I used to have. You know, I used to wake up and I'd be stressed. I'd think about anything and it would stress me out. And now I'm just like mm, waking up refreshed. Okay. Yeah. And then the other thing is you mentioned that you had really extremely high estrogen dominance. And what do you think are some symptoms that already have improved because as a, as a result of all these estrogen levels dropping back down towards normal? And this was something I noticed for a long time, not realizing my PMS was bad. I mean, like two, three days before I was supposed to get my period, it would be like stress, crying, every little thing would you know, set me off. And now I'm like, I know I'm supposed to be getting my period, but I'm not moody. So what, like <laughs> the rest moody. of your family, like, thanks you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, that's what my boyfriend had told me. He goes, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. So, and you know, that was something that's been a huge change that I've noticed and, you know, everything's regular and everything runs smoothly. And I, it's just well, normal. Well, that's, and then the other thing is what's the tangible result of your, you had really low testosterone levels before, and those are improving. Yeah. What do you think tangibly from a day-to-day -day basis has changed as a result of improving testosterone levels for you? My workouts are better. You know, I don't have the anxiety and the depression that I didn't realize I had. And now yeah. like seeing the improvement, it's like, wow, I was really like, I was really in the dumps, you know? Well, that's so, what a lot of people don't realize that testosterone, low testosterone in women and men as well in women is associated with severe anxiety. Right. And then the second thing you already mentioned is a lot of people don't link low testosterone in women with lack of results from exercise. So mm -hmm. you can exercise you're up the wazoo, but you ain't building muscle and you ain't burning fat. And guess what? Nobody's bothering to look at your hormone balance. Right. And one of the reasons can be low testosterone or abnormal levels of testosterone. That could be the issue. Right. I find that it's interesting. Like a lot of times when we work with men on hormones is that, you know, men, male hormones tend to recover quicker in a lot of ways, but you can literally see if a guy's working out and, and their testosterone levels improves, you can literally see muscle tone return back to their body. Like, and their muscles are stronger and they're lifting more weight. Uh, I know you work out a lot. Did you, have you noticed that from an exercise performance standpoint that they, things that have been changing for you the past six months? Yes, absolutely. Because like I said, it was a gradual decline. And it just got worse and worse. You know, I couldn't hold the weight in my hand. Um, I just, it got to the point where simple things were difficult. And now I'm getting back to that. You know, it's slow, it's gradual, but you know, I'm not running a race here and I just feel good about it. I can do it. So I don't have the pain in my wrists that I had. So yeah, it, there's definite improvement. So, well, you know, one of the things people don't realize is that um, testosterone is a hormone, but it's also related. Uh, it can stimulate the bone growth hormones. Mm -hmm. So the bone repair hormones, uh, a lot of that is stimulated by levels of testosterone as well. So women with low testosterone can have trouble with building bone and repairing bone. So imagine when you're working out, exercising, you're getting injured, like what affects tendon healing, muscle healing, muscle growth, bone growth, bone healing. Testosterone is a hormone that has a lot to do with it. And not to hope and focus on testosterone, but you also know that vitamin D plays a role in this, thyroid plays a role in this, your digestion plays a role in this. All those pieces are like basically aligning in the stars for you now. So congratulations. I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have the question, you know, and you're here to answer that question today is number one, are these results real? And number two, are they sustainable? Does, does life continue to get better and better? Like, you know, for me, that, that's like something like that's the difference to me. A lot of people are like, can I just come see you for an appointment? And I'm like, no, I'm teaching you a skill. If I do my job right at the end of these two months, you're going to learn how to think like me. So you can troubleshoot through this for the rest of your life. Not that you're dependent on someone like me for the rest of your life. So there's a difference. Like, so my question for you is, is that, did I do my job right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm to the point where like, I will go to my physician and thank God I have a very good physician that will work with me. And I will say, I want this, this, and this tested. And, you know, she's like, well, maybe we should do, and I say, you can do whatever you want, but I'm not changing what I'm doing because I know what I'm doing and I'm going to continue to do it. And she's very good about that, luckily. So sustaining this is not a problem. You know, once I got my hormone results after I retested, there was a couple tweaks I had to make, which to me were very simple. I'm like, okay, that's easy. 
So, and I will continue to do that until I retest again. So I think some key takeaways here is that number one, you absolutely need to test your hormones. No when and how and what the right testing is. Number two, you need to learn how to understand these hormone patterns because your physicians certainly don't. And then number three is implement everything that you've learned so you get results. So reinforces everything that you're doing. So that number four, you can gain self-confidence and kick some ass. Right. <laughs> yep. And that's, that's, that's how I feel. So. That's the secret. I love it. Thank you, Pamela. That's it. That's a wrap. Thank you for letting us uh, have a follow-up to where you are now. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I love the fact that today on Pamela's interview of where is she now, we really define the formula for success for autoimmune turnaround. And when you look at her decrease in pain, still at zero, her increase in activity with her exercise tolerance, her ability to perform her best in her career as a teacher, and an improvement in her personal life with improved sleep and attitude and mental health. How does she achieve all this? And for me, I think that hormones definitely was a huge part in this. And that's why I wanted to do this follow-up like nine months later, because hormones continue to get better over the next nine, 10, 12 months, and hormones continue to change the rest of your life. So I think to me, one of the winning formulas that Pamela is demonstrating is number one, you got to get your hormones tested and know how to do it properly. Your doctors don't. Number two, you got to learn what these patterns of hormone imbalances are that are triggering autoimmunity. Yourself, you learn because you can't depend on somebody else. They don't know. Number three, learn what the supplementation lifestyle changes are so you can implement like mad. <laughs> and then number four, Keep implementing so you get results because results is what really reinforces and makes it easy for you to continue doing what you're doing. So that's the winning formula to kicking ass with hormone balance so that you continue to have sustained autoimmune turnaround. And if you want to learn more about how we do that, join our Facebook group, Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally. And we have a program to turn around hormones naturally. We also have a program to transform autoimmune disease naturally. Check out our Facebook group. Thanks, everybody. If you feel like someone else could benefit from learning about this or hearing Pamela's story, go ahead and put their name in the comment section because they may not listen to you. They may not listen to me, but they might listen to Pamela's results. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.